Hey there, welcome back. I'm Holly the Twister Sister. We are back with another free balloon animal tutorial for you guys. This week I'm going to show you the really cute bumblebee that somebody has been making famous over on YouTube or Facebook. Um, somebody posted this a while back and wanted to know what the tutorial was and I didn't have one. I had filmed one many a few years ago when I was very very pregnant with my first child and then she was born and the video just never got out into the world. So now here it is, the Pod Bod Bumblebee. Um, it's called Pod Bod, it's the name of a series of balloons that are made using a similar technique as the one you're about to see. So if you like the Pod Bod style for this bumblebee, then you might also be interested in checking out some of the other cool animals you can make using the same sort of a design technique. We've got a fox and some other really cool animals over that will put the link to that training series in the description down below. Or if you are in the twister hood, you can watch all the stuff I've ever made in the history of my career for free. So that's an even better deal. You can get in on the twister hood right now. I'll put the link to that in the description as well. So to start things off, we're going to need a black 160 and then some sort of yellow tone. <laughs> I think this is marigold because um, I don't have a yellow yellow, but you're going to need 350s or 360s, whatever you got in a yellowish bumblebee color, or it could be a murder wasp color, but we're going to make it cute. So it's going to be, at least it'll be cute while it's murdering you. <laughs> All right. So on the black 160, we're going to start with that. We're going to start with his legs and arms. Okay. So for the legs, I like to just do a small little bubble. Fold it over after that to make a loop. His little foot. And we're going to come up however long you want his legs to be. So about right there. we got to hold on to these twists for the next few steps here. We're going to make another twist about an inch or so down. And then we're going to do his arms, which you're going to need to wrap around a 350. So they need to be somewhat big enough to do that. Okay, so I'm going to make my other little twist there. Okay, still holding on to all this or this is going to come undone. And this I'm just going to kind of wrap around itself like that a few times so it doesn't come undone. For the next step, okay, so we've got that all twisted together. Now we're going to finish it off with another leg just like this one. Okay, so same size on the legs and the foot, the little loop and a little bubble into a pinch twist. Once you have all this, you can get rid of the rest of your balloon and then just secure it so that it doesn't come undone. Gently set that off to the side <laughs> so it doesn't untwist itself. And you're gonna grab your yellow 350, 360s, whatever brand you're using. All right, we're gonna start, both of these I've inflated about the same amount. They have about a two inch tail. And we're gonna start on whichever one you want and make a pinch twist, somewhat large. I mean, it's a large balloon, so. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna take our little bee guy here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up his arms. We're gonna slide the 350 through his arms. It's gonna come all the way down our balloon. Okay, and we're gonna get his body it's like he's gonna be hugging that 350 like this. Okay, hold it on to that 350. We're gonna take the other one, but up behind. If your pinch twist comes undone, that's okay. We can put it back. We're gonna take the other balloon up behind his body. And where they meet at the top, above his arms, we're going to twist them together. Okay, so it's going to be like that. I'm going to fix my little bubble back down here, pick it back into a pinch twist. Okay, if it doesn't want to stay, you can kind of hold on to it while we do this next part. But what we're going to do is take one of our 350s. We're going to bring it down the side, behind the legs in front of the pinch twist. So the pinch twist is going to go behind that. Keep the legs in the front as you go underneath and bring it all the way back up to the top on the other side. All right, so we should have something cute like this. If you need to kind of pull his little legs out a little bit or reposition stuff, 
it's okay to do that, but it should be able to kind of sit up on a tabletop once we finish the head up and all that, you'll see. Okay, and then we've got the pinch twist sitting back here in the back. Uh, by the way, this is a great attachment point for a little stinger if you want to do that. <laughs> uh, but now that we're here, we need to go ahead and twist in a white 350, 360, whatever you got. And the reason that if you're not aware, 350s are with one brand, 360s are with another brand. So, you know. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and wrap in our white. Uh, three, this is a 360, because it's a metallic mix. Okay, and I don't need both of these yellows up here in my way. Um, I'm just gonna keep the longer one, so we can get rid of this shorter one. So, I'm gonna do the eyes first. We're gonna come up, I don't know, maybe about like a palm's length, and then go back down the same size. Twist those two together. Got two little eye bubbles. You can get rid of the rest of the white when you've got to that point. I'm just gonna wrap this around a few times and hide it inside of his body. Hide all kinds of stuff in there. <laughs> all your mistakes and do-overs. <laughs> Okay, now what we're gonna do for the head is we're gonna come out in the back, a little spacer bubble, like that. Another round bubble. The number two bubble is gonna become a pinch twist. So get that, wrap it around itself. All right, now the rest of your three, whatever you got, it's gonna wrap nice and tightly just around the eyeballs. Look how cute. <laughs> so wrap that nice and snug all the way around till you reach the pinch twist in the back. And then we're gonna go ahead and twist it into that little pinch twist. Bum, bum. Look how cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're done with this now. You can get rid of that part if it's really full like this one. You just need to pinch off a bit of uninflated part at the end, and then you can make a hole in that or cut it off with your scissors carefully. Look how cute! He's a stinking cute little bee. Any good bee has to have some wings, right? So get yourself a clear 260. I've inflated it fully except for a little tip at the end, and then I let a bunch of air out before I tied it off. Uh, is it weird that I'm talking in a frame like this? <laughs> tied it off and then tied both ends together. So it's somewhat nice and soft and squishy. And all we're going to do for twisting on this one is we're going to put one hand on the nozzles, the other hand on the other end here, pull it out to find the middle point, bring your hands together and twist them together. Okay, those are going to be your two wings. Grab your little bumblebee here in the back. This pinch twist in the back of his head is what we're going to wrap his wings into. Just like that. Now, they're kind of looking a little bit like dragonfly wings at this point because they're a little too long and oval shaped. So we're gonna open them up and make them nice and round. Don't know where that accent came from. Round. <laughs> And just straighten those out and now look how cute, he's so adorable. Okay, the last thing we have to do for this guy to finish him off is some antennas. Now, he is super cute at this point. You can probably get away with drawing some eyes on and calling it done if you want to make this design a little bit faster. Um, but the antennas just kind of take it over the top. <laughs> so we're gonna go with a 260 black for the antennas. And just put enough air in here to get two bubbles. I'm gonna cut off this extra long tail so it's just got a little nub at the end there. And we're gonna twist this in half. So we've got two bubbles and we wanna get the air from this bubble down into the end of the balloon. There are lots of different ways and techniques that people have for doing this. You can kinda of stretch out the end, but I always, when I do that, every single time, I snap my fingers and it hurts. <laughs> But go ahead and do it if you like it. What I've always done is I'll take the little bubble here in my palm, so I'm ready to squeeze it, and I'll take the remaining balloon, except for the end sticking out the top of my hand, 
And I'm just gonna kind of fold this up in a zigzag sort of pattern inside of this hand, close my fingers around it so that it can't expand because the air is gonna try to, if we're squeezing it out of here, it's gonna try to go somewhere else, anywhere. We'll have no control. So just try to make sure that anything inside of your hand is not allowed to puff up, okay? We want the air to come all the way to the end here. So give it a little squeeze and you'll see that it behaves just like we wanted it to. <laughs> So then I like to find the middle point and squeeze it and then twist it a little bit so that your air doesn't try to scoop back over onto the other side, okay? No talking, we're social distancing, guys. Stay on your ends. <laughs> All right, and then the way I attach these is, and probably would be easier to do this before we put the face on, but I always forget to do that. <laughs> We're just gonna get these wrapped around the base of the eyes. I'm gonna kind of cross them over. And then what I'm gonna do, there we go. I'm gonna pull them both really nice and tight so there's no air in the balloon down here. It's just like a flat string. Pull them really nice and tight up into the eyes and they will just kind of wedge right into the top of those eyes. If you need to tie them, like make a little knot or something up here to tie them up above the eyes, sometimes I've had to do that in the past. But if everything, like if the eyes are nice and fully inflated and you really do a good job pulling on those antennas, they will just stick up there with the friction of being pulled and tightened with all the latex and stuff. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> so let me draw some eyes on him so we can really get that whole cuteness effect you guys stop it just stop he's too cute if you really want to bump up the cuteness add some whites on the eyes <laughs> how's that that even takes it up another notch now the last detail that i always like to add is a little black stripe you don't have to cover the sky in stripes to get the point across of what it is but i do like to take a uninflated black 260 and it's not quite wide enough for my liking just like this so you can take your scissors and just run them all the way down the length of your uninflated 260 here to open it up now it's nice and wide it's the inside there and then we're just going to wrap this around his belly so it's going to go right here and that's going to be his one little bumblebee stripe and then we'll officially be done with this one. All right, so I've threaded one end back behind his little belly here, and I'm gonna tie them both together on the side here and then kind of rotate this so the knot is hidden, just like that. Isn't he so cute? <laughs> I love this little guy. <laughs> now, the reason why these are called pod bods is because it's like a tripod body. Okay, so on most of the animals in this series, We've got the two legs kind of sticking down like this, and then this part of the body makes a three little thing tripod. So these are great because they will sit up on a table, so they're perfect for restaurant work, um, or just as nice little centerpieces. They'll you know play nice and sit nicely on your tabletop decor items and things like that. They're somewhat big because most of them do involve a 350 or 360 balloon. And so they're a little bit more to hold on to and a little bit more uh, wow factor with the bigger size. So if you guys like this, let me know by leaving a thumbs up on the video or leaving a comment letting me know what you think of this cute little bumblebee. And if you're going to attempt to make it, I'd love to see pictures of what you come up with. You can post those over in our free Facebook group. Link is in the description below. If you're wondering where I got this cool balloon dog shirt, you can get your own in my store or like underneath this YouTube video, I've uploaded some designs there as well. If you like what you saw here today and you're not already subscribed, what are you waiting for? If you don't subscribe and ring that bell, you're gonna miss some tutorials because YouTube won't tell you when they come out. So make sure to subscribe if you wanna see more content like this and other balloon related topics. I hope you guys are having a fabulous day. Check out some of these other suggested videos and I'll see you over there. Bye.